welcome to Pleasant Green Sunday School. This is Lesson 12 for May the 17th, 2015. We're still in Unit 3, entitled One in the Bond of Love. Our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is the sum is greater than its parts. The sum is greater than its parts. Devotion reading is taken from Galatians chapter 3, uh, verses 23 through 29. Our background scripture is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, verses 12 through 31. Our print passage uh, is taken from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 14 through 31. Our key verse reads, We were all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free, we were all given the one spirit to drink. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, verse 13 from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is as a result of experiencing this lesson, the students should be able to do this. Number one, learn how each member of the body supports the other members. Number two, value the different gifts operating within the church. And number three, use spiritual gifts in cooperation with others for building up the body of Christ. We have three outlines today uh, taken from our adult quarterly. One is entitled, uh, Many Members, One Body. The second, uh, Mutual Dependence. And the third outline is entitled, Divine Provision. Our biblical context is as follows. The church in Corinth was being weakened by internal issues whose bias or basis was their lack of spiritual maturity and their inability to break away from carnality of the city itself. Paul devoted three chapters of the book of 1 Corinthians chapters 12 through 14 to the exercise of spiritual gifts and apparent major problem among the members of this church when they gathered for worship. I certainly thank and praise God for the privilege and the opportunity again to share another word with you from our Sunday School lesson. Um, We hope that you uh, had opportunity to read last Sunday's lesson uh, taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 1 through 11. And that topic was unity in diversity. Paul Uh, was addressing uh, the use of spiritual gifts uh, or the abuse uh, of the gifts in the local church. And today is a continuation, uh, if you will, uh, concerning these gifts and and how God has uniquely uh, placed each one of us or each one of them in uh, the case of Corinth uh, in the body. for edification of the entire body. That's very important. So our outline, our biblical context, um, for the most part is the same. And we, uh, and I'm sure that you have studied the Church of Corinth and heard a lot about it, um, uh, how corrupt they were, uh, and some of the issues, uh, the division, uh, even at the Lord's table. Uh, but it was a beautiful illustration uh, as we look at this lesson today. Uh, the Apostle Paul uh, did a masterful job in doing his best to try to explain uh, unity to the church at Corinth and, and the purposes by which they, uh, the Lord had given them a gift. Uh, and I want to keep in mind that we're not talking about talents. Talents are natural endowments. Uh, we are talking about a gift, uh, and that gift uh, was given by and through God's grace and His mercy, uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to talk about that a little bit today because I love what Paul is using here about this word being baptized. 
um, and we understand what that water baptism is, but Paul uses the same uh, scenario, the same meaning in that word uh, baptism uh, to help the church of Corinth understand that they had been put into the body uh, by the Holy Spirit. That's how we are uh, uh, and how we get into the church. We're not, we're not joined, uh, uh, if you will, uh, uh, in the church. Uh, you cannot shake the preacher's hand and be joined to this body. We are put into the body. We are baptized into the body in, uh, of Christ by the Holy Spirit. And, you know, as we, was, uh, we were in Unit 2, uh, uh, some weeks back talking about the community of beloved disciples and, and, and this faith community as we said uh, previously that uh, all of the people in this community are saved uh, we are born again uh, if we have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior we are baptized uh, supernaturally into the church this is nothing that uh, someone uh, 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 another man can do this is done uh, completely by God uh, through the Holy Spirit but that's what we read in our key verse for this lesson Paul says here uh, we were all baptized by one spirit that's what he's talking about that's what he's trying to convey uh, to the church at Corinth it doesn't matter, matter whether you are a Jew or a Greek are you a slave or free? Uh, it doesn't matter if you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Uh, just like it says in Romans chapter 10, verse 8, 9, and 10, uh, we were all baptized. We were put into the body and put into the church. But what was interesting as I studied this lesson, um, uh, God had really blessed this church. Uh, if you look at all of the gifts uh, that God had given the local church, and in the, uh, the introduction, uh, uh, I want to read a little bit of this before we get into the lesson outlines. It says, This church, though sinful, had been blessed with the full measure of spiritual gifts, but abuse... But abuse and misunderstanding had led to a disruption of fellowship among them. That's beautiful uh, to know that God had given them everything that they needed to edify one another and so edify the body of Christ to uh, uh, make it stronger, to make it what it should be, to allow it and uh, 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 to uh, uh, to be able to flourish in unity, in a oneness. Uh, you don't even hear too much about that these days, about a oneness in the spirit. But when I was reading uh, 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 this uh, uh, introduction here, it reminded me uh, of, you know, when we're in prayer about uh, different things that we want, God to give us, uh, even in the local church, it, we have to stop and think. Maybe the Lord has already given us what we need to function, but we have not learned how to get along with one another. We have not learned that uh, 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 we need to work in concert with one another. And consequently, we are still suffering uh, because we lack to get to the next step or to the next level. and But I just couldn't help but think about that. And this church was sinful. These are saved people but acting as carnal folk. Saved people but acting as carnal individuals, natural folks. Not understanding the measure of God's blessing uh, uh, and totally uh, uh, disrupted the fellowship. And I know we see that today, but we want to get into these outlines today. Many members, one body. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, verses 14 through 20. I want to read this from the NIV translation. 
Now the body is not made up of one part, but of many. If the foot should say, Because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for, the, for that reason, cease to be part of the body. And if the ear should say, Because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, cease to be a part of the body. Verse 17, If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? And if the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. Verse 19, if they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. So here, Paul is using the human body to explain the body of Christ, to explain the functions of the body of Christ, to help us to understand that it's important that the body uh, uh, survives, if you will, or uh, that it is edified, the entire body. So each member, whether it is an eye or an ear or a foot or a hand, makes a contribution. Uh, uh, when, I, uh, when I said that, the Spirit of the Lord reminded me, you know, some years back growing up in the church, uh, they had a saying, uh, uh, particularly during praise and worship, that everybody would put a log in the fire. Uh, so we would make the fire burn or make the fire hot. Everybody contributed. Put a log in the fire. Don't just see the fire burning and not put something in. And, and it reminded us the, that we all had something to contribute to the worship and to the praise and to the unity of the church. So if you bring what God has given you to do and I bring what God has given me to do and we both appreciate the fact, I love this in verse 18, uh, but in fact, God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. So if we don't function in the place or in the area where God has given us to function, it disrupts the body. It disrupts the fellowship. It disrupts the unity and the oneness that we should have. And, and, and that's what the church at Corinth, if you go back and read uh, that first letter, uh, and even over into the second letter, the Apostle Paul was really concerned with these uh, uh, church folks. Uh, they were really uh, 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 had a lot of division, even at the Lord's table. They were just carrying on, just like uh, carnal minded individuals, not realizing and not uh, uh, embracing the fact that it was a blessing to receive this gift from God and be put in a position to make a contribution and they were too busy fighting amongst themselves uh, to appreciate the uniqueness and the diversity of God. There, you know, and, and God did this purposefully because he did not want all of us to uh, uh, sort of be uh, bumping into one another or having the same gifts. So he gave us different functions. And, and that is beautiful. It, it, it wasn't intended to confuse the body. It was con uh, uh, intended to edify the body, just like the human body. Each member of our body makes a contribution to the entire body. And Paul, uh, you have to appreciate uh, this example, this illustration of how he takes the human body and its makeup, you know, and it just goes to show how far off course the church of Corinth was that he would have to take, uh, use this type of illustration to help them understand the position that God had put them in. And so they all have something to contribute. But what happened, uh, some of the more uh, important gifts, and we're going to talk about that as we go along, that they thought that their gifts were better than the other gifts that some of the uh, weaker church members had. And, 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 and so this caused confusion amongst them, and they began to think of themselves more highly uh, than they ought to think. And, and so here all believers become a part of the body of Christ, the church, when they uh, place their trust in him 
as a result of the work of the Holy Spirit. I want you to read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, verses 12 and 13. At the moment a repentant sinner trusts Christ as Savior, uh, this spiritual transaction occurs in the believer becomes a member of the body of Christ. This is a spiritual uh, 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 transaction. As a result, each member of this one body is given an important yet different function to perform as the Holy Spirit uh, determines. So, you know, it, it's, it's not your call. It's not my call to determine uh, what I should be doing. And, and a lot of times we can't make up our mind what, sh what we should be doing in the church. So we're all over the church in different auxiliaries and not really uh, uh, being fruitful in any one position, but we're just moving about. But that's not the way the Holy Spirit works. He gives us a function, and we are to perform that function based on the will of God. God will teach you how to function in that position. He will use you in that position. And, and, and one thing we have to understand about gifts that God gives us, everybody should be able to benefit from that gift. If you're doing something in the body of Christ that only edifies you, you probably need to check that out. Because that's what was going on in the church of Corinth, this self-aggrandizement that 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 was taking place that uh, there was some thinking uh, uh, this was for them and and that they would uh, need to be edified and you know and that is not uh, the way God determines or that is not the purpose for your gift uh, uh, another thing that uh, and we talked about this a little bit uh, last Sunday when we were talking about these gifts uh, this is another trick of the enemy a lot of time we sell the gift or we sell the use of the gift. Uh, we use the gift to our edification and, and, and depending on who can pay uh, for the gift or the use of the gift, th that's where we uh, tend to, to, to lean. But always remember, God gave you a gift. If he gave you a gift, it was for the entire body to be edified, period. It is without cost. You didn't pay for the gift. So why do we make others? And always remember, there are some people who cannot afford, uh, when we put, put it out there like that, there are some people who may not be able to afford uh, what we are doing. So you know God is not a part of that. Paul illustrated this important principle by showing how every part of the human body is essential to its functioning. God in his sovereignty intentionally designed the human body in such a way that its unity is dependent upon its diversity. Isn't that beautiful? Its unity is dependent upon its diversity. You need me and I need you. Each part must perform its assigned function if the body is to remain healthy and productive. If any one part refused to perform its function because it was unable to do what another part was assigned to do, the entire body would suffer. Paul's analogy revealed the attitude of some in the church of Corinth who were apparently dissatisfied with their gifts and were coveting uh, the gifts of others. This attitude was a direct denial of the sovereign will of God who was the source of their gifts, and this attitude would potentially impede the growth and effectiveness of the church. In the church today, it is important that we be reminded that our unified strength is the result of the unselfish exercise of our many diverse gifts for our edification and God's glory. We are indeed many, but all of the same one body. You know, that word attitude keeps jumping out in this outline here uh, uh, several times here. And I think that it's, it's, it's critical that we take note of our attitude about Christian service, uh, what God has given us to do. Uh, uh, some years back, and I, I said this a lot, uh, sometimes it's, it's, it's not our faith, it's our attitude about the faith. Uh, and sometimes when you hear us, uh, we're, we uh, are saying what we're not going to do. 
Don't you know that injures someone? If you decide that, you know, if God has given you something to do and you decide that you're not going to do it, let's say you keep deciding that you're not going to be a part of the church, you're not going to function, don't you know you're hurting someone? Don't you know that that, that is a, a, a disruption in the entire body? I can't do what God gave you to do. You can't do what God gave me to do. I need to fulfill my role and my gift as God has a, a portion to me. And you need to fulfill your responsibility uh, uh, as to what God has given you to do. So we need you. And, and we need one another. We need this oneness. You have something that I need. I have something that you need. And we need to bring these together, these gifts together, and share them and edify one another. You know, it's, it's so many testimonies that we sit on that we could help our brothers and sisters and encourage them and encourage the church. Uh, don't you see the hopelessness a lot in the church? Our expectation that God is going to fulfill his promises. You know, it, it, always remember there are weaker members in the faith. There are weaker church members. And, and our action and our reaction offends and it affects all of us. So we have to be careful. Uh, and, and that word attitude is critical uh, the church of Corinth, they had attitude. They had attitudes that they brought to the Lord's sa uh, a supper. They had attitudes, bad attitudes that they brought to the fellowship. And, and all of their gathering was disruptive. Isn't that something? So we, we have to be mindful that God uh, uh, has blessed us. And, and we need to uh, be accountable for the things that God has given us to do. The question is asked here in the quarterly, how essential is it that the local church recognize the need for diversity in order to attain unity? If that's what we said earlier. We need that diversity. We need what that function that God gave you. The church needs it. Uh, all of us have something to contribute to bring to the table for the good of all and for the edification of the body. Of Christ. Our second outline is entitled Mutual Dependence. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, verses 21 through uh, 26. And again, from the NIV translation, the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head, the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker and indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatment, but God has combined the members of the body and has given greater honor to those parts that lacked it, so, there, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Self-explanatory. Paul is doing a masterful job here explaining uh, weaknesses versus strengths and how we should handle uh, one another and build one another, work with one another. Uh, 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 you know, we have to bear uh, the infirmities of the weak Christians, uh, and so God blesses the weaker vessels uh, uh, so they can function, uh, and so there would be no division. And you know, and I love that about God. He will teach you, He will train you, He will bring you up to speed on what He wants you to do, and He does that because He wants us all to have an equal part in this thing. God, we created the division. The Church of Corinth, they created the division uh, based on their attitudes and what they thought. Uh, should be, but God did not do that. Uh, uh, so here, there should be, there should be no division in the church. There should be no cliques. These folks had all types of uh, uh, cliques in the church and, and special folks, and, and we have that, and we see that in the church today, but that is not of God. I had two scriptures here uh, that I want us to look at when we get a little further down we're going to talk about that uh, uh, confusion and that disruption because when we see that we know right away that God is not in that 
And we ought to do something about that. We ought to say something about that. We ought to be able to address that biblically and not allow that division. Uh, because all of us are affected. I like this in verse 26. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. You might say, well, I'm still doing well. But we don't have the fellowship. You may be doing well personally, but corporately we're suffering. Our church, churches are weaker uh, uh, in that oneness when we don't uh, uh, act in concert or work with one another. Uh, if you decide you're not going to participate and you're not going to do what the Lord gave you to do, you should know that everyone is going to suffer uh, as a result of that. Is that what we really want? Is that why we come to church to break it up, to split it up, to cause division in the church? Or did we come to bring things together, work with people, cross those uh, 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 obstacles, if you will, get rid of those barriers that cause division and different things. Why do we allow these things to go on and, and we waste our time coming together and we leave out many times uh, after service is over the same way we came in, dysfunctional. I want to keep that in mind. This is a very impressive lesson here. Uh, as Paul uh, lays his case out, uh, uh, some among the Corinthian church could be described as babies in a playpen who were unhappy with the toy they had been given and were consequently trying to take someone else's. We see this stuff go on all the time. It goes on to say, those who possess the less spectacular gifts were complaining that theirs were less noticeable, while those who possessed the more spectacular ones were belittling those who were considered less prominent. Paul addressed this erroneous attitude by continuing his analogy of the proper functioning of the human body. The diversity of the body's parts requires a mutual dependence. If any one part is damaged or removed, the entire body suffers. Those parts that we cover with clothing or internal are just as vital to the proper functioning of our human bodies as those that are visible. Paul logically argued that one gift is just as important as, a, as another. Both in less public and more spectacular ones, every spiritual gift is mutually dependent on the other, yet remains uniquely important to the whole church. Those possessing the more prominent gifts, we are uh, expected to encourage those gifts are less obvious. Those whose gifts are less obvious, I'm sorry. But I, I want to just say this. There are no spectacular gifts, if you will. And this is commentary that I'm reading. This is not uh, biblical language here. So we don't want to get the, uh, 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 the mindset that, that, that what your gift has uh, uh, is spectacular versus what someone else has. Uh, and so that is, that's a little gift, so that doesn't mean anything. God, the creator of the universe, the sovereign, the almighty, the omniscient one, said this is what you should be doing. If God did it, it's a big deal. If God made you a divine encourager where your job is just to smile and embrace and encourage people, you need to take note of that. Because God thought and saw fit that you should have that gift that you know how to encourage, uh, even though you may not be uh, of what uh, someone else is doing, you need to take your role very seriously because he could have easily left you in your sins. You could have died. You could have gone to hell. You could have been lost for all time. God pulled you out. He rescued you. He saved you. He anointed you. He blessed you. He gifted you and to make a contribution to the church. How dare we think uh, that that is, is, is insignificant? Uh, uh, there's so many who would love to be in your shoes, who is lying in a hospital and may not even know that they are in the world, would love to be up on their feet praising the Lord as you might, uh, being able to come and go as they please without the assistance of someone else or, or some mechanical vi uh, device. You are blessed beyond measures that you are able to speak and to see and to understand and to realize uh, uh, that you're not on medication lying flat on your back. There's so many ways we can look at this to understand and appreciate the fact, but instead these Corinthian believers were arguing and fighting amongst themselves and they were uh, 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 looking down on one another and, and, and spoiled brats, if you will, 
because they didn't want, they didn't have uh, uh, what they thought they should have. So how do you think God feels about that? That he created you for a specific purpose and role in the church and you throw it back in his face because it's not good enough for you? So we need to take, uh, and I'm using this, I'm glad the Spirit of the Lord is using me this way because if you read the history and the background of this church, shame on them. But we can see it, see this example here that Paul is pulling out all the stops to get this church back on track. Because uh, uh, I don't know if we understand this, we don't want God to step in and start making changes to correct us. We don't want God, uh, as uh, 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 one of our uh, reverends talks about this all time, all the time, you don't want God to take you to the woodshed. So we need to get our act together, you know, and we need to understand that God sits high and, and he looks low. So it's a blessing that the word of God is coming to this church to correct them because God is going to come in. If we don't get our act together, we are subject to being chastised uh, uh, by God for our attitudes. And, 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 and we don't want that to happen. So I love what Peter says. I believe first Peter Chapter 5, he says, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God and he will exalt you in due time. Humble yourself. So it goes on to say here, the question is asked in the quarterly, what are the implications for mutual fellowship among believers in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 21 through uh, uh, 26? And what are some practical applications? So uh, hopefully we have answered those questions as we have come so far in this lesson to help us understand that we need to try and do our best to get along with one another and, and look at what the Lord has done and, and thank God for using us in such a way that he wants us to be a part of his church. Uh, it's his church. It's not our church. Uh, uh, it's his body. It's not our body. We are just members uh, and so uh, we don't have to be a member, but God has so graciously given that privilege and that opportunity to us. Here in the last outline is entitled Divine Provision. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, verses 27 through uh, 31. And again from the NIV translation. Now you are the body of Christ and each one of you is a part of it. And in the church, God has appointed, first of all, apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then workers of miracles, also those having gifts of healing, those uh, able to help others, those with gifts of administration, and those speaking in different kinds of tongues. Verse 29, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But eagerly desire the greater gifts, and now I will show you the most excellent way. Very beautiful. So you can see this church, as we said earlier, God had really blessed them uh, with everything that they needed. But I want to go over to the 14th chapter. Uh, as we looked at this uh, in the King James uh, about these uh, best gifts, and, I, and, and it's not quite clear what the Apostle Paul meant, but I want to look at a couple of scriptures here that will help uh, uh, help us understand that there's uh, we don't want to think that that what we have is is better than someone else. We don't want to follow that that trend uh, that the Church of Corinth had. But First Corinthians chapter fourteen. Verse 12, Paul goes on to say, So also you, since you are zealous for spiritual gifts, seek to abound for the edification of the church. So if we wanted to talk about something that's best, the best thing for us to do is to seek the edification of the entire church. Use whatever God has given us to edify everybody. Uh, and this is uh, some hint at least for, uh, for me, is what I believe the Apostle Paul is is getting at here. And also, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, I want to go down to verse 19. 
Uh, he says, however, in the church, I desire to speak five words with my mind so that I may instruct others also rather than 10,000 words in one tongue. So in both of these verses, we can see uh, Paul's desire to reach other people uh, through what the Lord has given him to do. And that should be our aim today. Uh, it's a great thing for us to consider one another. Uh, I believe Philippians chapter 2 helps us understand, don't do anything uh, with uh, selfish motives. You should read all of that uh, and see the attitude that Christ had when he came and he gave his life for you and for me. This outline here says the church in Corinth's uh, preoccupation with spiritual gifts caused them to fail to see that each other of them was perfectly fit into the body and had been uniquely gifted to promote mutual spiritual growth. I want you to read Ephesians chapter 4 verse 16. Paul reminded them that they were all Christ's body but had not lost their individuality. In fact, it was the individuality of their spiritual gifts that made mutual concern for each other necessary. When spiritual gifts are used properly, harmony within the body of Christ results as individual members work cooperatively to fulfill God's purpose for the church. Beginning with verse 28, Paul again emphasized that it was God who had appointed and equipped gifted members for the church. He listed gifted leaders and specific gifts that God provided for the proper functioning of the church as a whole. His purpose was to make it clear that all believers had different gifts, none being more important than another. Paul then posed a series of rhetorical questions to further emphasize the intentional assignment of diverse gifts to solidify this, this truth. You know, some time back uh, during a Wednesday night Bible class, uh, pretty much every week uh, when we uh, began our class, I was always asking uh, the participants, what had God given them to do? And I want to remind us, all of us that are part of this faith community, that say we are disciples and members of the body of Christ, you have a function. The question is, what is it? And are you doing it? We need you. Don't ever let the devil make you feel as though you are not important. You are important to all of us. If nobody ever tells you that, we, we hope we have said it and that you have seen it uh, uh, in these scriptures and some of the comments that we have made. You are extremely important to your church. You are extremely important to the body of Christ. We need you and you need to get about your father's business. Ask God what he would have you to do. He will give you what you need to do. Put you where he wants you to be so you can function and be a contributing member of the body of Christ. We don't need to argue. We don't need to debate or uh, uh, be in a state of confusion. This is a reality. God has given you that gift. And so we want to be found doing the things that are pleasing in his sight. This was such a beautiful lesson, uh, but it reminded uh, me, and I'm sure it reminds you, that there are always issues that come in the church, and uh, that, that unregenerate man, uh, unsaved individual that we were, walks right alongside of the regenerate man, the born-again individual, looking for an opportunity to overtake us. So we want to act as though uh, we are uh, uh, God's children. Uh, we are not confused. We are not uh, uh, somebody that's insignificant. But God has blessed us uh, to be a part of this mystical body. So we hope, trust, and pray that we have given you something to, to think about. And we want you to go back and, and read those scriptures, the entire uh, letter. Uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12 and you can just see the problems that this church was having but thank God for the Apostle Paul who uh, wrote a letter to them to get themselves together and gave them all the illustration that they needed to correct it 
So having said that, we want to conclude with our closing prayer that is offered in our quarterly. It says, Dear God, help each of us to consistently use our spiritual gifts to benefit each other and to advance your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So again, we thank and praise God for the privilege and for the opportunity. And until such time that the Lord will permit me to share another word with you, we say God bless you.